Welcome to the Screen Rock Podcast, the podcast where we discuss the weirdest and worst content that's been written on our screens and indeed our minds. Shout out to everyone who subscribes on YouTube, Apple and Spotify. Big up the Patreons, the Illuminati and the Freemasons and a massive shout out to the ladies who listen who are some of the most gorgeous and indeed sexy ladies in the UK. I'm here with Jake Farrell. Big intro's back, I like it. Big intro's it. back, but it's tight. I'm, it's tight now. <laughs> I'm making sure, you know, cross-platforms, thank you, thank you, thank you. Obviously, the Freemasons, who are, who are paying their way for extra content, sure. and the Illuminati, who are speaking regularly in the group chat, which by this point, I'd imagine, has become a document that we have to hide from the police. So, <laughs> it's become feral, yeah. Yeah. How's things, mate? Um, I, I, do you know what? I must admit, I've, I've had Olympics fever the last couple of weeks. This is, we're we're going to be out of Olympics woods. But I yeah. feel like I'm admitting it because I think it's quite a like zone two centrist dad thing to like. Do you, do you know what it feels like to me? And it, this is like, it feels a bit like Eurovision. <laughs> you know where it's like, it's sort of funny to be into it. Do you know, right. like it's, it's almost a kind of like a gimmicky thing to yeah, like. Yeah, I know you what know? you mean. Yeah. But, but you've got it. You've got the bug. Yeah, I don't know what it was. And I'm very usually very disdainful of stuff like this. Anything, I'm very cynical about like the kind of national pride. I thought the kind of sentiment around the 2012 Olympics where everyone was like, the opening ceremony has made me proud to be <laughs> British again. Like I thought that was a load of old rubbish. I couldn't yeah, be yeah. dealing with that. But this time around, I have found myself being like, I really hope Kelly Hutchinson wins the 800 meters. What are you um, watching? I've, I've, watched, I've watched all sorts. Mate, I watched all sorts last night. Actually, this is quite bleak. Not bleak. Emma was away last night, and I went to watch Stevenage play opening game of the season. Mm -hmm. On the way home, because it was half five kickoff, took me ages to get home. Blah blah. Got home, and I was like, I'm going to go and eat something out because I don't want to. I don't want to. Um, <laughs> I don't want to like like go home and cook. And the thing I'm going to put into my mouth, I'd rather I do it outside the house rather than. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm half pissed and I want something disgusting. Yeah, I'd had like two pints before it, and I was like, so I went to this. Um, uh, this like taco place in Loughborough Junction that I've been like eyeing up for a bit, but I'd never really been in. Yeah. Went in, went to the like to, to get seated, and went to the back, and it was like a back room. They were playing very <laughs> very loud uh, Latin inspired music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There were only people that looked to be from a Latin background there, yeah. and it was really beautiful. There was loads of families. There was loads of like amazing kind of kids and running around or whatever. Yeah. And I came into the middle of that sat on my own sweating like a horse and ate three tacos and I ordered them too spicy and the waiter looked at me and he said are you sure <laughs> and I said yes <laughs> and I had a white t-shirt on and but well, the thing is in all of this in three screens around it they had the taekwondo on the men's taekwondo it was the first time I'd ever watched it it was the first time I'd ever been aware of the great British athlete that was in it and he lost the gold medal bout and I was gutted. Really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was sat there in a taco restaurant in Loughborough Junction, surrounded by L Latin, uh, L L Latino families. Was, was not there watching. anyone Latino competing, or it was just it was just on? No, they then put it on to watch. No, someone. he was fighting an Iranian man. They right. were all talking. They were having a nice time. I was there with Cholula sauce all around my mouth, <laughs> fish taco all over my white. You know this hombre with his ginger hair. He is really heartbroken about his. You know his taekwondo fighter. He lost to an Iranian. Careful, hombre. Too much chipotle sauce. It's just like this hombre is going to trigger his IBS. Going, he, he looks a bit young to be divorced. But he's, <laughs> so that was my vibe. And yeah, so that was my, that's my Olympics journey. I guess I'm getting older. I'm getting into the stage of life where I would start worrying about the Olympics or start worrying about that stuff. I, I can't get it, man. I, I think it's a couple of things for me. First of all, I think it gives me PTSD to being unemployed. <laughs> I'm the same with Wimbledon because it's like a daytime. It, they they show it during the exactly, day. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It's a, it's like, it starts like eight in the morning. This is it. it yeah. This is it, and it just reminds me of being like early twenties, unemployed, and just watching it, and you know, like watching on terrestrial television because I got I can't afford to watch. Do you That's know what I mean? So it's funny. Like, it probably gives me PTSD. Of that. That's so funny you say about Wimbledon as well because like that was a real like in my childhood. It's like Wimbledon's on all day. I don't watch tennis for one second for the rest yeah, of the yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I've got to fucking watch every second of it. Who's playing in the doubles? But then, but then, but then even like tennis is a fairly decent sport to watch. Yeah. When you get to the final Wimbledon, that's, that's a fucking good thing to watch. There's just so much Olympics, I'm just like, i just like, what the fuck am I watching? Yeah, and and right. it's also, like, certain Olympians, you're a bit too smug. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Like, you're not, like, I think there's a real difference between sportsmen and sportswomen mm. and athletes. Right. Right? Athlete is running a straight line. <laughs> yeah? Athlete is, you do what a horse does, basically. 
Sports people, yes. they've got brains. Right. There's craft. There's artistry. Sure. You know, you could do a step over. <laughs> I, th- I knew you had Martin Odegaard in your head. <laughs> but like, like, oh, oh, what? Like, I saw, I watched a guy the other day win a javelin. Yeah. Like, like he, he, he was. He, I he, found that quite inspiring. He could throw a javelin. The guy from for, Pakistan. Yeah, probably. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I say probably. I, I don't. I don't know. It, yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, I, don't, yeah, I don't know where he's from. I, I, I had no observation no about interest. the guy at all. I just watched him throw a stick really far, and I couldn't help but just watch it and be like, "It's 2024, man. Like you don't even need to throw sticks." There is something very like smug about the term Olympian. Oh, mate. I, like I, I was. Yeah, it's Olympian, and it's also like we we had a few. Like where I grew up, there was a few like Olympians, and it, you know they got like names, like, like roads named after them and stuff, and it's like. Where's our roads being named after us for well, the for the but, Screen Rock podcast? But, but the thing is, I, I like like we make. <laughs> I mean, this is gonna go, here we go. Come this on. is presumptuous no, no, no. at this point. Yeah, we make some money out of Screen Rock because In people. Theory, yes, one day. <laughs> because people like Screen Rock. It could be the case. <laughs> no one makes any money out of throwing javelins because no one gives a fuck about throwing javelins you watch a bit of taekwondo when you're half cut half dying from alone. Cholula sauce and you're sat alone because your wife's away can I ask you something as much as you got into it please when you're next watching taekwondo never again I thought so yeah <laughs> it's unwatchable it, it, it's, it's, it's stuff it, it's like awards for people who stick with things that mm. no one else would do <laughs> do you know what I mean it's like you know I'm the best 2000 metre swimmer in the country you you are at the moment because no one else is swimming that far. Because yeah, yeah, no yeah. one else, everyone else has got better things to do. <laughs> Just because uh, no one's gonna be bothered. Like, and some of the stuff, the fucking horse stuff. The, what's it called? When they, when they oh, get the, the horse, horse stuff has got to go. I mean, yeah, they, they, I I am also very Tory about this. I've realised I'm very Tory, where it's like only the traditional events oh, could yeah, be mate, in there. Break dancing. Fuck well, off. I do feel bad for the lady. Have you seen this about the lady? No. I I, 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 by the way, I know there's loads of like loaded like culture war shit going on with all the events. I don't know about any of it, so if I tread on a mine, make yeah, sure yeah, 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 put my leg back. There on. was a lady, uh, an Australian break dancer, who I mean, I don't know how anyone really knows. I don't know what good break dancing is apart from spinning on your head. If you're not spinning on your head, you're not doing. Then we do fucking dance. karaoke next year. It's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> that is my vibe about the Olympics. <laughs> um, she did a very, oh, I don't know. It didn't look great. What a back foot, roly poly. No, just kind of writhing around on the floor. Right. There's a gimp in Somerset who got arrested for that and she's getting a medal, is she? What's the gimp in Somerset? You never heard of the Somerset gimp? <laughs> you never heard of no. the Somerset gimp? No. There's, Should I have? He's a gimp in Somerset. He's been, he's been gimping for years. and a load Gimping of, for a, years. A load of men found him once and, um, you know, he was just writhing around on the floor. Genuinely, he's he's been given a... Um, a two-year order that he's not allowed to wear a gimp outfit anymore and he's it's specifically worded he's not allowed to ride around on the floor. <laughs> well, they just found him knocking about. Where was he? Well, uh, well he, he, he was gaining notoriety. I can't believe we're talking about the Somerset gimp. This was months ago. He was gaining notoriety as a gimp. Some, you know, There's not much on in Somerset so a few local lads went and found him and they sort of found him <laughs> in the costume just in a field somewhere yeah. and he, he was just like writhing around on the floor. Wow. Basically, the Somerset gimp who's doing no one any harm who's actually bringing a bit of entertainment to the bored fuckers of Somerset who've had too much cider, right? He gets a restraining order. Your mate gets, got, a, gets a, a medal. medal. I don't know if she got a medal or if she was just really bad, but yeah, I did feel bad for it. It was a real like internet pile on of. It's, it's so funny. It's like every year there, there's like a re kind of understanding of, oh, Britney Spears. Obviously, that was actually horrible. It killed her mental health. Even like James Blunt, people called him a posh wanker for many years. It really hurt him. And then every single time everyone forgets that, then a lady from Australia tries to do uh, break dancing. And everyone's like, you're fucking shit. You look like when Gandalf gets tortured by Saruman. <laughs> Should we do a podcast? Let's do a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, look, this week, let's. I, I'm, I'm going to say this because it's not the first time you've done this this week. This is We're still recording the week of the live show where you ambushed me, where you said that I made a thing about the El Burrito Monster where I didn't. I told you about it in, in rehearsal, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. I, I know mean, some I, of the stuff in I the mean, podcast. I mean, I ambushed you with some <laughs> other stuff that night. Watch it on Patreon. <laughs> get I, I, get I, on Patreon We should quickly say, by the way, if you're not on Patreon, get on there because there's some really, really good stuff We've got on so there. much to good the stuff The group chat well. is popping. Um, the hats are flying out the door and the exclusive content, we've recorded a, a comedy industry special where I say some very naughty things. Naughty, naughty things. Um, but you've ambushed me again this week. Who are we talking about? This week we're talking about the Alan Partridge of the football YouTube scene, the former policeman with an alias who's a Man United fan. Well, I've, I've been looking forward to this one for a while. We're talking about Mark 
Gold Bridge. Get on this. Yeah, first episode in a while where it's me that's feeling nervous. A little bit nervous. Yeah, go on. I think that Mark Goldbridge Mm -hmm. and his YouTube career is a testament to the fact that you could be anywhere doing anything five years from now. (laughs) Because this is well known now. At one point, this man, I think he's of Italian extraction, although he really doesn't look it. Wow. Wow. He, that, I mean, biggest revelation. <laughs> he was a very, I think, highly respected and highly paid investigator of financial fraud for the Greater Manchester Police. And he is now a man that sits in front of YouTube playing FIFA or ranting about Man United being shit for the benefit of mainly 13 year old boys. And like, if you just said to him six years ago, this is what's going to happen. He would never would have imagined it, right? That's the, your life can change overnight. You could be anything. You can do anything. Your life is not written for you. Comparison no one would have seen come in. He's a bit like Rick Ross. <laughs> he is, that former, Go on. former copper, Go on. former copper who ends up doing something else. Rick Ross was a police officer, wasn't no, he? No, he wasn't. Did you not know that? I don't think I did. Yeah, Rick Ross was a police officer. The only thing I know about Rick Ross is the meme where he goes, I've been eating pears and shit like that. Do you remember <laughs> that? Yeah. And it's a bit of a sad thing because that meme was made uh, with Tim Westwood. Oh. Yeah, and Tim Westwood is... You can't really laugh at that at the moment because Tim Westwood has been outed as quite a prolific sex creep. He has. And it's a shame because he was kind of... It's, it's funny, if we'd have made Screen Rot 15 years ago, we, we'd have we'd have spoke about Tim Westwood, not obviously not knowing that he was doing horrible shit. Yeah. But he, he was a kind of... He was a meme before a meme. Yeah, he was a he? cringy, you know, internet, radio personality who... Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm now glad we can't do an episode about Tim Westwood. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one for the Behind the Patreon. The sex offenders oh, list. <laughs> <yeah. laughs> that will be join, a long series. I mean, well, again, join the Freemasons if you want to know more about sex pests. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll talk so, about that. Um, yeah. So, Mark Goldbridge. Now, uh, the reason I'm nervous is because I do work within the football YouTube space. You do. I do the kickoff. By this point, I like to think I'd have launched my own um, YouTube channel where mm-hmm. I chat bollocks about Arsenal every yeah, now yeah. and then. And Goldbridge has, you know, as, as, so I'm a member of, I, I do The Kickoff, which is a football YouTube show um, headed by True Geordie, who's, who, you know, True Geordie's been a Newcastle YouTuber for a long time. They're right at the beginning of the YouTube boom. And really. they, I, like, I, I, you know, he's a mate of mine, but I will say he's like, he's he's the he's the OG. Right. You know, he, he is. He's yeah, the yeah, OG. yeah. You know, all, all these, and, and obviously there's been... A change of cast on the kickoff, and and Goldbridge actually did the kickoff a few times, right. um, years and years ago. Since then, he has interviewed some of the old cast of the kickoff. A guy called Lawrence McKenna, who, when this podcast had a lot less listen- listeners, I called a slimy cunt, and now that has a few more listeners, I call him a slimy cunt again. <laughs> And in that interview, Goldbridge and Lawrence weren't particularly complimentary about myself and the other new members of the. Did kickoff. they call you out by name? No. He, they didn't in that, but someone sent me a thing before where I think he did. I think like, there was a clip of me on the kickoff and he was like mugging me off. I, I should say, and it, and it really doesn't come across whilst I'm doing a whole episode about this man, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I, I, I don't because I, I do. I mean, I, and I'm sure this is what we're going to get into. How much does Goldbridge know he's being an Alan Partridge? How much is he deliberately performing that? That was, yeah, very difficult to tell. And And I do think... I do think there's a a kind of smile and wink done behind the camera or something. Yeah, and, and I, I basically I I actually have a lot of respect for Goldbridge and I wish he'd stop saying mean things about me. Right. Because I think he's really good at he's it. He's good at broadcasting. Like he's good at broadcasting. And in the same way that we spoke about with, you know, people playing a character, are you a good character? Is the character consistent? Goldbridge's character really yeah, is. Yeah. But what's fascinating I think about Goldbridge's character is he's a bit of a chameleon. And he can adapt to different settings. Yes. I've seen clips of Goldbridge doing like live stuff. Right. Where he basically does stand up. Really? Yeah. It's it's mad. <laughs> and he's like getting laughed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he's, he's, he's like, I mean, I didn't I didn't choose to be a Man United fan. Who would? <laughs> you know, stuff like yeah, that. But, yeah, yeah. but it's kind of working. Like, like he's funny. He's also, got bits, kind of after dinner speakery. Got bits. He, he's very after dinner speakery. And the other thing with Goldbridge, obviously he 
he rides the wave of cringe. Mm. Yeah. And I will say, look, his whole thing as a football YouTuber is to be very sensationalist, to be very reactionary. Right. That That's what that space needs. Yes. But when you put him in a different space, he does what the other space needs. Have you ever listened to his talk sports show? He's quite thoughtful on that, no? He's, he's just like really measured. He's, he's, he's less reactionary than most of the, but most of the, like, the, the, Pundit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, they'd have Danny Mills just yeah, saying something. Yeah, the old footballers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, or like Jamie O'Hara and Cundy, and we love Cundy and O'Hara, don't love we? Them. But they are... The, they're the template they're, for this podcast. <laughs> we're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> My airline's certainly getting there. But but they are very clickbaity, headliney, headline-y, yeah, talk sport-y. Yeah. Whereas actually, I, I, I think Goldbridge is almost too measured for his five o'clock spot on talk Yeah, sport. I know what you mean. And, and I think that you're right. It's like... He becomes the nation's therapist. He, yeah, he, he does. does. He does. At half five on a Saturday He's when everyone's on their way back from a game, being like, you know what, Goldbridge? I think Big Ann should be attacked in the street. He's like, oh, I don't think he should. Do you know, do you know what I mean? It, Very it, big of him to do that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no violence. We've got Jake from Stevenage on the line. Jake, you're crying in a Mexican restaurant. What's going on? <laughs> it's the Taekwondo, Mark. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. It's like ballet. Um, but like, this is the thing. The internet just don't remember, do they, Mark? The, the streets Aust- do not. <laughs> the Australian lady was just, you know, she's not a Somerset gimp, Mark. <laughs> yes, I did have a go at you on the podcast, Mark. <laughs> but this is, uh, like you say, I think Goldbridge is sports media now. He 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 has decided what sports media is. But this is kind of what he's most famous for. He does these reaction shows where he's on YouTube and he's watching Man United live. And we should talk, by the way, about how much of his sec- success is predicated on the fact that f- since he's been doing this, Man United have been shit. Yeah. And so like his his kind of hope for them to get better might actually be the end of his career. But this is him uh, when they were playing Brentford. This could be four. I remember this. Oh, no! Oh, no! You're having a laugh! It's 4 nil after 34 minutes. Don't do this. You can't do this. 4 nil after 34 minutes. What is going on? 2020 is a game, fucking I remember. joke. It's an absolute disgrace. Don't talk to me about the bloody Glazers. These players are a joke. Luke Shaw, what are you doing? <laughs> Luke oh Shaw. Oh, my God. They don't deserve to wear the shirt. We said it last year. Why are you picking these pricks? Why are you picking them? Luke Shaw's just been... Oh, my God. He shouldn't have started the game. That is on the coaches. I'm sorry. He shouldn't have started the game. It's a 1v1 foot race. And he's been beaten like he's had 10 pints last night and he's playing Sunday morning football. That's fucking awful. Absolutely awful. Why is he playing? Why have we bought a left back and picked him for the last two games? 4 0. Luke Shaw, their best player. 35 minutes and it's 4 0. I mean, this is so good, right? Because this is a disgrace. I'm question. sorry. You what know, is you know, going on at this football club now? Go on. You know, he's a former police officer. Yeah. Do you think he ever got that upset when, like, a, a criminal didn't get. <laughs> deserve to wear the wig <laughs> we presented the evidence come on this jury are a disgrace oh, <laughs> oh that's so funny he's it, performed it's performed and, and the thing is i mean that's a watch along right that's a, that's a saturday watch along yeah, I yeah look I, I, i've done watch alongs with true geordie for mm. years and i don't well, for, you know for a while and I, i'm like there's times where I'm like, who the fuck watches this? Then you watch that and you go, you watch that. It's box office. <laughs> <laughs> what I love is that it's like, I think with a lot of these people, the humour is from the, in- the incongruity between what they say and what they look like. And so obviously he's got like his little gelled hair and he's got his like funny little polo shirt on. And he dad lo- on holiday. He looks like a dad on holiday that's like, should be looking through the brochure to go, should we go to Disneyland Paris tomorrow? Yeah. And then it's like, he's, he's also got like, the way it's rigged up, it looks like the X Factor. Yeah. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. And, and knowing what we do about tech issues with filming shit in spare rooms, his looks like it cost him about 10... I know it's all like green screen or whatever, but all the graphics and everything. And it's just like, how did he end up there? I just don't... It's just well, amazing. It, well, um, yeah, I mean, I guess I can answer it a bit. It, it's, it's, you know, I, I know people are in this space and it's... It, it, how did he end up there? Be, because... New media has emerged because old media failed. Right. Basically. He's there because... And, and, and by the way, we should acknowledge that we have some, like, 
uh, very esteemed football writers who listen. I don't know if they want to be outed. I'm not, yeah, not going to name right, them. Okay, I'm not right, going right, to name right. them. But we, we do have some like really, like, I want to say really esteemed, like the best in the country. Yeah, yeah. Football writers. Yeah. A, a couple of them. But they, they listen. I to thought this. it was a piss take when I first found out about it. Yeah. I, well, mate, mate when, when, the, when the two, well, when one of them popped up in my DMs initially and followed me on Twitter and NDM, I was like, what the fuck have I said on the kick? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what inaccuracy have I come out yeah, with when yeah. I'm talking about football? But, but no, they listen. And... I, well, I, I don't want to sound like people like them are failing. Yeah, and that's why. No, no, I see. That's that's why gold bridges. But I, th- I think, I think generally, like football on TV, we we've spoke about CBS Glasgow in the past, mm-hmm. and we're like, that is so good. It's so funny. Yeah, and it's because they don't take it too seriously, and they make characters out of like, right, right, right. like Mika Richards and Kate Abdo and the Henri, you know, love triangle thing and blah blah blah. blah. But like, main, most mainstream football media on TV is really dry and a lot of the time they don't commit to one thing so like monday night football really commits to giving carragher a vr headset and letting him be really tactical yeah right a lot of the podcasts i listen to are very serious and go really tactical yeah, yeah. or you can have cbs glazo which is a bit of fun mm-hmm. what what people like goldbridge have clocked is that like the viewership of football is so young mm. that they don't want the joke being that a married man fancies the woman. They don't want in-depth tactics. They mm. want tantrums. They want to shout. Yeah. They want tantrums. <laughs> Where's the bell? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Ding. Fuck no. Yeah. But, but they, they want tantrums. And, and he's giving them that. Right. And, and you're, you're right to point out his appearance. He looks like a dad who's gone down to dinner at an all-inclusive in Gran Canaria on the last night of the holiday where he's going to treat himself to a, a cocktail he'll pay for rather than a free one. Right, like, come on, kids, it's the last day. Let's <laughs> oh, get. Oh, I'd be up. belling off the charts right. here. But, but that's what's funny. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, like every now and then, because like young people try and do YouTube. Do you know what I mean? There's, mm. there's like young kids. I mean, there's a, there's an Arsenal guy called Babs, right. right? Young lad, and I mean, he's funny because again, it kind of he's this incredibly softly spoken young man, and he, he almost whispers, he's like, five things we learnt about Arsenal after their two one win over Aston Villa." Mikel Arteta is a tactical genius. <laughs> but it's, uh, but it's, it's like funny. Uh. But so, so I, th- I think the best disconnect you can get, I mean, like, like we've done Arsenal fan TV. Mm. And I, th- I think one thing you mentioned at the start is that Lucky Goldbridge, in the last 12 years, United have been comically shit. <laughs> and it's a fall from grace from where they were. Right, so it right, keeps right. being funny. That's the character. Robbie has... Now, like, I, I honestly think, and I, I could be wrong here, and I, again, I've got mates who appear on this channel. Arsenal Fan TV started making millions because Arsenal were crap. And by the way, I know we have non-football fans who watch this, so I don't yeah, want to yeah, get yeah. into football too much. Arsenal Fan TV is by a guy called Don Don Robbie, Robbie Lyle, who we did a podcast about. Legend. Did really well for a long time because he'd go outside Arsenal and interview people about how shit Arsenal were. And they would Arsenal are now yeah. Arsenal are now really good. Really good. Yeah. And not in a way that's funny. <laughs> isn't it funny how we tactically boss that game? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Is, isn't the field tilt funny? Isn't the amount of shots we limit other teams to really funny? Not really, no. And I, I, I fucking know that. Isn't how good I, our I transfer spent policy? I've a season trying to make funny reels about Arsenal. I've been swashing, boys. Have it's good now, is it? Cheers, lads. <laughs> But <laughs> that is the most Jacob Hawley thing of all time. <laughs> I'll get a bit of traction because Arsenal are shit. Uh oh! <laughs> uh oh! Stop fucking scoring, Carl. It's the thing I wanted, and but, it's but the so thing I don't Don Robbie did, what Robbie Lyle did when Arsenal got sick, he now created DR Media, which right. is Don Robbie Media, and he there's a, there's a Tottenham guy called Expressions. Do you okay. know him? I don't know him. No. Right, funny Tottenham guy. Mm-hmm. Don Robbie employs him to be funny, even when he's taking the piss out of Arsenal. KG, a Man United fan, who I do the kickoff with. Don Robbie gives him money to take the piss out of Arsenal, despite right. the fact Don Robbie is an Arsenal fan. He needs outside help. Goldbridge is still riding the wave of. United what was it called? Being... Don Robbie Media. It's DR Media Limited. That's what it's on the company house. <laughs> we need a name for this because my favourite one we talk about all the time is the fact that Big John uh, and his son's media company is called. Who, Kung... who I work with a bit, so I've got to be careful. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not saying anything bad about it. It's Kung called Po Media. Kung Po Media. What would we call Screen? That's what I was thinking. I mean, uh, actually, maybe we could do a poll for that on. On the Patreon. Yeah, on if you're on the WhatsApp group, uh, sorry, the WhatsApp group, the, the Patreon group chat, uh, we what might get to a, we might get to a point where Jake and I make enough money that we need a business account. If we do, what do we call? What do we list ourselves on in Company House? Mango Media, something like yeah, that. Yeah, I, I, I get a funny feeling that might be it, or Ticker Exploded Media, something like that. I reckon we're going to get a load of answers on the Patreon. Bald Cunt Media. <laughs> 
technically useless, technically clueless media. Dense cunts media. <laughs> Do blonde oh, Should we watch so some more good. Goldbridge? Yeah, uh, yeah. I was going to do the next one, which is a bit of a long one, and it was about kind of how he's just like. Actually, would we'll do this because it's basically like they've they've raised the threat level of football to such an unbelievable level. You try and marry the tone of voice he's using here. This is a recent one with what is actually happening. Yeah. About three weeks ago, maybe two weeks ago, West Ham had a bid accepted for Masrawi. Pletty Gold said Pletty it was goal. for 15 and a half million euros plus four. Tonight's update from Pletty Goal is <laughs> Bayern Munich will not budge on 50 million euros plus add-ons for Delit. They're not budging on it, even though they've just got Leverkusen down from 40 million euros to 25 for their centre-back. But they won't what budge about? for us. So I mean, how fucking ridiculous is that? You won't budge on the lit at all but you've just got leverkusen down i mean I, 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 am i missing something here i mean they've yes got they're a business that, <laughs> am I missing something? you've literally got your center back target price down and you won't move on hours at all but it gets better they? gets better they want 25 million euros for Masrawi. I mean, oh my God. Oh my God. They want 25 million euros for Masrawi now. A couple of weeks ago, it was 16 for West Ham. I mean, there you have got it. The prime Manchester United tax in all its blatant glory. So just for the, again, context for non-football listeners, he's talking about them possibly signing a right back and a centre half. Yep. And... They know that Man United have got more money than other clubs. So they obviously charged them a bit more. Yeah. And he's talking about it like it's the most moral outrage since like the post office scandal. Or like, like, like his that. mates at the old bill should be intervening. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They won't give us the player we want for the amount of money that we want. And it's like, again, this is just a bit of a run of the mill story. They'll get both of them in the end. I think they have got both of them now and for about the right price. And it's just like... He has to manufacture. It can't be. That's the word. Normal. It's he manu has to manufacture. I, I hate outrage. that. It's what I hate about like like the what. I don't know if I've done my Arsenal like YouTube yet or. But when I do the kickoff and stuff, I try and be like funny in a kind of comedian funny. Right. I hate the kind of performed outrage. I hate the kind of like I really care about it. It's just like so boring. Yeah, and it's like yeah. no one. Everyone knows you don't care that much. And do you know the clue? It's because you're quoting things like Pletty Gold. <laughs> When you're using uh, that, that, that's, by the way, that's one of the funniest things about football yeah. is that quite seriously, he's talking about 15 million euros being traded between two businesses. That's a very serious business deal. Yeah. And he's quoting the word Pletigol. There, there was a thing. There was a There's thing like on, another report from Pletigol. It's like, sir, another bid has been lodged for Masrawi. <laughs> 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 sir, it's Pletigol. Another bid is here. It, it's, that, that, it's one of the funniest things about, about football is like the kind of, the, the, the hyper importance that like pundits and people like that have to apply to things to make it dramatic, to mm. make people watch. Yeah, yeah. But the words they have to use are so ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, Pletty yeah. goal. There was a thing that happened at Arsenal. Again, I'm trying to make this accessible for non footbally people. Basically, there was someone working for Arsenal who was really high up, a guy called Raul Sanyehi, mm. right? He was like a director. He'd be involved in buying players and stuff. And he got kicked out of the club. And, you know, no one has officially said this, but I think it's because he was doing some dodgy stuff. Right. Now... Very serious journalists wrote about it at the time. The first on the case, the first to get that news, and it's because they must know someone in the club. The first on the case was a Twitter account called The Football Gerbil, <laughs> who is definitely a middle-aged man who wants to remain anonymous because they've got information from inside a football club. So their avi, their picture on Twitter, it's is a gerbil, gerbil <laughs> holding a football. And, and for weeks, this guy was like... And, and they speak about themselves in the third person. Jerby update. The gerbil has heard from inside the club that, that this is going to happen. And all these like people at Goldbridge, but on the other side, were like, you're talking shit. That's bollocks. That's definitely not going to happen. You don't know anything. And then the, like, he did I'm leave. calling him the gerbil. <laughs> the gerbil. And, and, then, and, then, and then for weeks afterwards, the little victory lap that this gerbil guy did, yeah. he was so happy that he got that news first. Right. And he kept, kept tweeting the same. Like, he'd write something on a tweet, but he'd sign off every tweet with, Jerby was first, Jerby was right. 
imagine a middle-aged man who's got his kids downstairs, his wife going upstairs going, Don, the dinner's ready. Uh, Come on, the kids are waiting. So and he just good. sat there. Jerby was first. Nice. Jerby was right. Football and and so now, I'm like, my mate who I go to Arsenal games with, like my really good mate, Joe, who teched the show. Legend. We've been going to Arsenal together for man. years. He's not as Twitter savvy as me. And every time we link to someone, or there could be some news, and he gets the name wrong. He goes, what's the football rodent said about it? He gets it wrong all the time. He like the, the amount, he'll, he'll be like he'll be like check the game rat on Twitter. See what the game rat has said. See if see if <laughs> just you what two, are we doing? two very clever, well dressed men wandering around North London going, What's the what's trying the, to get what's signal on our phone? Him trying to remember was it <laughs> was it soccer guinea pig? Who was it? The football rodent. No. <laughs> Oh, that's so <laughs> funny. Gerbil. But this is the thing, football's become insane and like all of these, this is part of the ecosystem of it's football. It's a serious business. Yeah. It's, it's, like, it's like, like it's it's one of the biggest industries that the UK has in terms of leisure. It's like people spend billions on it every mm. single season and we're being led by idiots. Mark <laughs> Goldbridge sat there screaming about Pletty Goal. Me and Joe trying to get signal to check the football rodent. <laughs> football rodent. He's not even called that. It's, and it's you know, he's, I mean, he's mainly, I mean, the kind of the, we maybe need a whole episode on him entirely, but I don't know how varied it would be the main person of course is responsible for all of this Fab Romano the here we go <sighs> merchant himself I, I don't like this guy no this is an Italian guy if you're, again non-footballist Italian journalist Italian journalist who uh, kind of became the first person this is a thing they have in the NBA basically a role they have in the NBA uh, and the NFL where basically agents have a journalist that they effectively Leak own. information to yeah. to kind of help their transfers clients. along. But then, but then this journalist for, for for like idiots like me who love football, he will tell me that a player is going to move clubs, and that is the best minute of my day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and he's basically become like the 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 arbiter of whether this is happening or not. Or there's yeah. a couple of guys from the Athletic that are now better than him. I I, I probably think. And he's the person that has, that has done this because he's inspired in the way that we said a, a couple of weeks ago. Gavinio is on like the lower rungs. And then, like, HS Tiki Toki is the king of the jungle. He's the king of the jungle, but there are a million football rodents <laughs> underneath him, all scrabbling around for the cheddar. And he's, it's like an arms race. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I, the thing is, I think Goldbridge, to come back to Goldbridge, like, that, what, the video we watched a moment ago where he's, mm. what's going on? Why are they trying, like, that, that's what works. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. True Geordie, my mate, who, you know, as I say, is one of the OGs, mm -hmm. he got massive because he put his iPhone on an ironing board yeah. in his in his bedroom, yeah. in, I think in his mum's house at the time, yeah. to make a video complaining about a footballer called Niall Ranger. And it looked like it had been filmed on a potato, the, the thing. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was, it was a long yeah, time and ago. And it was a but... very, very, very long time ago. That man, you know, owns studios, owns channels, travels the world talking mm. about football and boxing now. And it, and it's because, and I think we spoke about this on the podcast before, the irony with this stuff is that we crave authenticity so much. We All we ever want to see filmed is real emotions, real feelings. We want to get as close to the human condition as possible. Yeah. But like... And that's what Mark Goldbridge is doing. What... What, what, what do people looking. want to watch on the internet? Like, like deep down, if you wanted people's darkest desires, they watch pornography. Yes, it's real, right? Visceral, strong emotions. They watch Stimulates fighting. Them. Yeah, people hurting each other. Yeah, and 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 they watch people crying mm. about plenty girl transfers. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> he he he. But but the irony is, he's been doing it long enough that he started to eat himself now, and it's got ridiculous. Oh He's, man, he's trying insane, so no. hard to be That's authentic the thing, it's like and you to can't, care. You can't be like. You can't be at a five alarm fire all the time. Otherwise, yeah. it's, a, it's a real kind of like Masrawi possibly joining. It's not, it's like he'll probably. He wouldn't even start. He's, he's not that good. He's the second choice right back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so funny. Anyway, the, but I, the next one I just will do is like, he does have some comedy chops as well, like we've referred to. I, I think he's really talented. He's I, a funny like, I man. think he was wasted in the police force. <laughs> What was he, keeping people safe, saving criminals? No, let him do a one-liner about Madrawi. <laughs> and this one, he's uh, he's commenting on a on a thing that someone's just sent. Main genus is doing oh, the sorry, bloody no, wrong draw. one, wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about Jermaine Genius. Actually, let's watch this. Jermaine Genius is doing the draw for the World Cup. Uh, yeah. And uh, Goldbridge, Goldbridge isn't happy. Okay. Main... Go on, go on. Genius is doing the bloody draw. What? Standards are on the floor. Jermaine Genius. <laughs> How has he got that gig? I want his agent. How has Jermaine Genus got on the World Cup draw? He sounds he so like Partridge. He played for England. 
What? Barely played for England. They're having a bloody laugh. That's like they may as well have got Ollie Mers, Jermaine <laughs> Genus presenting That's the funny. World Cup That's draw. Funny. Oh my god. It's like me winning the lead role in a Scorsese film. <laughs> the world's gone mad. What a joke. Jermaine Genus doing a World Cup draw. Now, I can't believe it. What I want to ah. ask you is, when was the last time you were that upset about anything? <laughs> <laughs> well, we weren't. This is the point. This is the point. This is why people want to watch that, because they've never seen someone care about anything as much as he's pretending to, to care, care about, about Jermaine Genus. <laughs> like, no one has. No, like, like you, you, like, you could find out you're sacked tomorrow and your wife is leaving you. You wouldn't react like that. <laughs> You wouldn't, that, and, and that's no. the point. That's that's what that's what works. With, I mean, yeah. the irony is he'll be presenting it <clears> fucking <throat> next year. Yeah, he, he 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 could end up doing the FA Cup draw this year. A one hundred percent. And do you know what? If if I worked for the FA and I wanted to get more eyeballs on that draw, Go I'd on, hire him. One hundred percent. Yeah, and get him to do something mental. One hundred percent. I'd hire him. And we will do it as well. If the FA Cup wants <laughs> Screen Rock Boys to draw. If you want 250 YouTube subscribers to have a look at your FA Cup draw, boys. Don't worry about Goldbridge. He's only got 2 million, all right? We've Contact got Eugene. <laughs> Go through our agent. Um, yeah. It's... But he, he, th this is the thing. Is, is what, like, as we said, he's got a talk sports show. Yeah. And not just any talk sports show. Like old school, you know, someone like Jason Cundy, yeah, yeah. who how long has Cundy been doing talk sport for? <sighs> Must be 15 years. At right. Least. And, and by the way, one of the best. The, the best to ever do it. Cundi, I mean, you and I watch Cundy and Andy Goldstein. So if anyone that doesn't know, these are two talk sport presenters and they used to do um, the sports bar together, yes. which was like a kind of late night phone in. Some of the clips from that, it's some of the best stuff on radio. And the clip of, uh, they, they stopped doing it. Goldstein moved to a different time slot and then he started doing it with O'Hara. And uh, the clip of him and Goldstein leaving saying goodbye doing their last show doing together. their last show is something we refer to it's beautiful yeah i mean i mean what's so funny is the way that they talk they, they and it's these two radio hosts who've been doing it together for years and and they are did cundy play for chelsea yeah yeah yeah. he's a professional footballer was yeah. he, he was he, he wasn't like he's kind of a hard he had a good level, he had a good right? career yeah, 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 yeah okay well it was shit but um <laughs> shots fired at cundy i love cundy yeah i know i know you don't have to tell me that <laughs> but they, yeah, they did this very. But like you know, they're, they're like cult heroes of that radio station. As soon as Goldbridge was available, <whistles> out of the way, lads. Goldbridge is taking five o'clock on a <laughs> yeah. Saturday. The the like that. Which if you know anything be, about football, that's a good. That's that, a big that time. Must, that, that's the hottest slot on the schedule. Surely, yeah, surely, yeah, yeah, yeah. biggest money, I'd imagine. Do you know what this has really made me think? That is either episode like a hundred or something of the screen rot. Hmm. Me, you. O'Hara and Cundy. We'll try and get them. Try and get them. I could, well, I, I do talk sports sometimes, so I reckon I could. I've, I've been in a lift with... Um, I've been in a lift with... <laughs> I've been in a lift with um, Andy Goldstein before. <laughs> he must have Cundy's number. So, yeah, we're only one step away. Uh, Six yeah. degrees of Andy Goldstein. But, the, but then, th this is the thing. People are kicking genuine talent out of the way for Goldbridge. And that's not me saying he's not talented. No, no, but no. People are going, make fucking space for the guy who cries about Jermaine Genus getting on... Getting on and this has been a theme of the podcast is like the DIY ethos versus getting a company to pay for it. Yeah. But the two are slowly morphing into one. Well, All of the YouTubers are now on to a lot of the... Like, like Rory guys on there, I think, as well. Goldbridge is on there and stuff. And like, there's a lot can't of... can't say too much about Rory. Yeah, we're not going to say anything about him. But like, there, there's a lot of... Uh, <laughs> Patreon. Patreon, Patreon, see on the Patreon. Um, yeah, it's morphing over. Where do we want to end up? We're DIY, right? We're we're we're, uh, uh, we're calling ourselves the Rotters. We're clearly not angling for well, a mainstream audience. Yeah, okay. Where do we want to end up? So let's speak it into existence. I've, I've okay. So uh, I've heard Goldbridge speak before. Speak about getting his talk sports blog. Right. He called the fucking shots, and it was a specific contract, and right. I think it was stupid money. Right. And he was like, "I'm doing it my way or the highway." Mm. If you're watching Sky, no, but, no, but uh, no, go on, go on. No, uh, well, uh, I, I don't. I wouldn't want to do it on Sky. I wouldn't. I, I would. I, I, I don't ever want to leave this bedroom. <laughs> I fucking do. <laughs> okay, we're gonna have to take a brief pause in the podcast. <laughs> We've got to finish that there. <laughs> but would you really? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's the funniest what? thing you've ever said. <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs>
I think you believed it for a second. I mean it. I want more money. I want the patrons to go up and up and up. I want us to get more and more listeners and subscribers. I want more money. I if want... I'm still in this bedroom at Christmas, someone needs to fucking kill me. Any one of the scumbags that came to watch the live show that I was talking to in the pub afterwards, <laughs> you have my permission to kill me if we're still in this bedroom at Christmas. <laughs> There'll be the the. Uh, there were a few people, I think, outside who who said to you, like, does he really drive you mad? Does he really wind you up? And, and I, I like this kind of series finale of Screen Rot is you coming around here one day. It's been a tough journey in. And, you know, I've, I've lost something else. I've left something else in the back of a cab. <laughs> something else has gone wrong. I've had, I've had a fight with someone on the internet. And, and you're already being like, he's fucking pushing me and getting wound up. And I, I and you're, you're while I'm getting the lights ready and moving the room around, I say, oh, by the way, Channel 4 were in touch. And you were, huh? I went, yeah, offered like fucking, you know, 50 grand an episode in a nice studio near your house where we could do it. And you go, yeah. And I went, don't worry though, I told him no. <laughs> and that's like, that's your Joker moment. That's your Joker moment where like you kick me yeah. out the window or something. You fucking <laughs> strike. <laughs> Full taxi driver. We don't want to leave the bedroom, do we, Jack? <laughs> do you know what? Even worse, you going, oh, it's just, I've missed the message here. Yeah? I missed the messages from the BBC. They wanted to give us a slot. I didn't look at my phone. But it's true. It like, like the, 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 you can't sell out, and he didn't sell out. You got to do it on your own terms. You've got to do it on your own terms. Well, and the... Goldbridge will always be Goldbridge. That's the thing. And until Man United start winning trophies again, in which yeah. case he becomes it's Goldbridge fucked. Media, <laughs> and he'll hire me to take the piss out of Man United for him. <laughs> That's it. That's our version of it. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait. Well, that'll do us for this week, I think. Thanks yeah. so much for listening, Rotters. Thanks, um, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks quick. for subscribing. Those who do subscribe to the Patreon, we've got some really tasty stuff for you, so thank you for doing that. And um, yeah, see you next week. Ciao. Ciao.